comments or questions, and I don't have to break the ice because Sweden, as the chair of the next the global forum, the GFMD, has asked for the floor first. So I will give the floor to Ambassador Ak uh, Eva Ackerman Borhe, the, the chairperson of the GFMD. You have the floor. <clears throat> Thank you very much. <clears throat> Uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Chairman, and uh, uh, I would be inclined in in uh, joining the the Amen. And um, now I have to maybe uh, apologize in advance for um, becoming a little bit more practical in my remarks about uh, three issues that I would like to take up as a follow up to these excellent and insp inspiring presentations. Um, I'd like to, to comment uh, on very shortly on the outcome of the high-level dialogue uh, regarding uh, the issue of international governance uh, on the post-2015 development agenda and the governance element of, of the work that we're doing there, as well as also shortly touch on the Global Migration Group and the Global Forum from a, a governance, governance perspective. So as the chair of the Global Forum on Migration and, and Development, Sweden was very encouraged by the high degree of common understanding of the importance of migration and development expressed at the meeting in New York last month. On the substantive discussions, the Swedish chair was delighted to see the overwhelming support expressed for the inclusion of migration in the post-2015 development agenda, as this is indeed also a main priority for the Global Forum program. We also uh, noted the strong emphasis on the protection of human rights of, uh, of migrants, the portability of skills and recognition of qualifications, migrants in crisis, among other very important issues that were raised and that we are committed to follow up also in the Global Forum work stream. On, on the issue of governance, uh, I think that, as you have pointed out, there was no new institutional arrangements for the governance of international migration that were decided or came out of, of the high-level dialogue. Instead, we will have to work with the existing structures, and I'm very optimistic that much can be done. As the Global Forum Chair, Sweden welcomes the very strong support expressed for the continued leadership of the Special Representative of the Secretary General on Migration, Mr. Peter Sutherland, to advance the global debate and improve our collective handling of the issues of migration and development. It's very positive that the Secretary General tasked Peter Sutherland to convene regular meetings with the leadership of the Global Forum and the Global Migration Group to identify shared priorities. And obviously, governments will continue to set the agenda for the state-led Global Forum, but I believe that there is great scope for identifying shared priorities, capacity building needs, and governments, uh, capacity building needs of governments, and areas of cooperation between governments and the Global Migration Group, both in the collective collection of evidence base uh, for the Global Forum meetings and in the voluntary follow-up of the Global Forum recommendations and outcomes. This can potentially be a very important step to continue the trust-building exercise and to get away from the false dichotomy of being inside or outside the UN system or sometime, what is sometimes staged as an opposition between those who are for or against human rights or for and against economic and social development. With regard to the Global Migration Group more specifically, we saw that the high-level dialogue welcomed the initiative that the group has taken to strengthen its cooperation and coordination. And I believe that further efforts can be made to improve the work of the group to strengthen coordination and synergies on migration and development. In this regard, we appreciate the constructive efforts by IOM, and we look forward to en engage with the incoming chair, ILO, to see how this progress can be furthered. 
We also support a more inclusive role of IOM in the Global Migration Group in order to ensure stronger continuity and solid migration expertise across the chairmanships. Indeed, the high-level dialogue also signals a strong recognition of the leadership of IOM in the field of migration. Now, just to comment on the inclusion of migration in the post-2015 agenda as an important aspect also for policy coherence within the system. Sweden believes that this could continue, uh, con could contribute very greatly to governments and development actors' efforts to plan for and act upon the opportunities and challenges that migration brings. In particular, we think that it could contribute to the collective efforts of the United Nations and other international organizations, including IOM, to bring migration into their analysis, planning and monitoring efforts at country level. In effect, we believe this would generate more collaboration among the relevant um, agencies, and I was uh, very encouraged by the uh, statement by the Deputy Secretary General, Mr. Eliasson, when he was calling now also in this intervention to uh, migration to be an integral part of the post-2015 development agenda. And in this regard, I would also like to highlight that Sweden is working very in close cooperation with uh, Peter Saladend when we are hosting a side event on this issue in New York on the 10th of December in partnership with the governments of Mexico, Bangladesh, Switzerland, as well as the Global Migration Group and the Special Representative. And indeed, he has already mentioned uh, this event, and we hope for, for great participation in, in that, of course, by all, all relevant actors. Mr. Chairman, lastly, to come to the Global Forum, and I will not dwell on on that, but I would just like the, to raise the issue of uh, of the Global Forum also as a governance issue. We were encouraged, of course, by the Secretary General in his introductory speech at the High Level Dialogue when he pointed out that many of the advances made uh, since 2006 was uh, uh, to a great deal to be a, a tribute to the climate of trust that has been established by the Global Forum. And of course, we think that this is an issue that we should continue to, to discuss. What is the relevance of the Global Forum in the future government, uh, governance puzzle to, to, to be laid? And of course, one of the big important pieces of the puzzles are the regular meetings between the leadership of the Global Forum and the Global Migration Group under the leadership of the Special rep Representative. So before closing, uh, I would like to extend the Global Forum Chair's gratitude to the Global Migration Group for its support to the GFMD process and to IOM in particular as the Chair and as the host of the support unit for the Global Forum. We look very much forward to continue our common work. Uh, and. Lastly, of course, I would like to, to point out that we see uh, an urgency in the continuation of the debate on future governance of international migration, and I cannot think of any better leaders for this debate than the gentlemen on the podium here this morning. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ambassador. And Thank you also for the, the great work that uh, Sweden is doing under your leadership to prepare us for the next Global Forum in the spring of uh, this coming year. Uh, we look forward to continuing try, to try to support you in any way that you consider appropriate. Uh, I'd like to go on to the next speakers on the list, uh, but before I do so, I want to recognize the presence of Mr. Guy Ryder, the Director General of the International Labor Organization, our neighbor next door. Uh, uh, Mr. Wright, please. If you're comfortable there, fine. We're also happy to have you join us on the podium. <laughs> Thank you very much. Lovely to have you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We also have uh, Mr. Sven Alkalaj here uh, from the UN uh, Economic Commission for Europe, who's already on the podium with us, waiting for the next panel. 
I've also, uh, my, I have two more speakers right now on the list, uh, uh, ICMC and UNDP. So um, uh, I think I see, uh, John, are you there? If so, go ahead, please. You have the floor. Thank you, Chair. Um, the International Catholic Migration Commission, uh, we, we like to say amen. Uh, we're we're fairly, fairly good at it, I think. Um, so ICMC, um, at, at the invitation of Mexico, uh, Switzerland, Mauritius, and Sweden, has been organizing Global Civil Society, the Global Forum, these past uh, recent years, with the Office of the President of the UN General Assembly asking us to do a similar role at the high-level dialogue this year. So if you allow me, I'll, I'll just speak broadly as a representative of civil society uh, to the issue of the high-level dialogue and action forward. We agree uh, and actually are quite stunned uh, that the big story at this high-level dialogue was strong convergence on so many important issues across the board. We saw civil society's five-year eight-point plan converge with Secretary General Ban Ki-moon's eight points, Peter Sutherland's ten points, IOM's six points, and crucially, the high-level dialogue outcome government declaration. And we've prepared on, on the back tables, a one-page matrix. It's just a checklist of that convergence. It's quite, quite impressive. Now, that, that convergence didn't happen, however, without leadership and co-leadership. Your institution, uh, Deputy Secretary General Eliasson, with the unsinkable Peter Sutherland, your agencies, Director General Swing and Ryder, among others, your governments, very much Mexico, Consistently also Sweden, Switzerland, the Philippines, Turkey, the Netherlands, Bangladesh, the U.S., the EU, Morocco, Germany, France, others, and civil society. So just want to say thanks for that leadership. But now the next step that we've been talking about so much here this week and another forum. With the first eye on the well-being of migrants, their families, and whole healthy societies, we need the big houses, the big houses of migrant origin, transit, and destination to assure, assert leadership and, where it makes sense, co-leadership, in particular IOM, UNHCR, UNDP, ILO, the High Commissioner for Human Rights, UNICEF, and UNODC. A leadership and co-leadership that's appropriate to mission-driven issues, connecting always but not getting bogged down in GMG or other interagency mechanisms unless the evidence shows they are effective or can be made so. Interagency consensus is not always a virtue. Surely convergence is enough and critical mass will do it. The same is true for governments and civil society. We are ready, huh? civil society already working with you every day globally and on the ground, and co-responsible with you. That's why we admitted that the eight points would take five years and collaboration. We have been struck, Chair, uh, we struck this week with your wisdom and determination, Director General, saying again and again, we've got to go forward. The issues are pressing. We'll move together with others when we can, but we can't wait. Indeed, that reflects the urgency in the waters off Lampedusa, but comparable suffering and tragedies 24-365 on other sea and desert crossings. While we've been meeting this week, another boat went down, this time from Haiti. Another 30 drowned, a hundred reportedly hanging on to the side of the boat for days. Millions of men, women, and children moved, sold, and trapped by human traffickers. Human beings suffering by the millions at workplaces of all kinds, including homes, where some 50 million domestic workers, most of whom are migrant women, and the disaster of xenophobia and xenocide. So to close, if you allow, civil society has three questions broadly to the UN system and to IOM. First, civil society asks, what really about migrants, not just in conflict and natural disaster situations, but migrant victims of violence and trauma in transit? Second, 
institutionally, civil society asks, we need more of UNDP in these migration and development processes. They're so good, and who they've put there is so fine, we need more. Second, what is the plan for IOM to give full consideration to a more formal and clear institutionalization of protection as a core mandate of its mission and work? Or the possibility to move from de facto to de jure part of the UN family in language we know very well from these processes in recent years, maximizing the positives and minimizing the negatives that might otherwise come with that. And lastly, civil society asks, I think, a question similar to what the Swedish chair of the GFMD was just speaking to, towards. How do we pick up, at last and together, the question of complementary global migration government, governance, which evidence-based and sensible to genuine state sovereignty rises to the challenges of globalization. Here, civil society's sixth point for five years of work ahead of us all calls for, quote, redefinition of the interaction of international mechanisms of migrant rights protection, which recognizes the roles of the GFMD and GMG, albeit limited revives emphasis of the distinct mandate of the ILO for worker protection and more coherently aligns protection activity of the agencies I mentioned earlier. These next five years, we can together rediscover that the end to globalized indifference is localized response that guides repair of the whole system. That's where we converge. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for a very thoughtful uh, presentation there. I want to uh, very appropriately now give the floor to the chair of the Global Forum in 2015, the distinguished delegate of Turkey. Thank you very much. Uh, we would like to thank Deputy Secretary General Eliasson and Special Representative Sutherland for sharing their valuable views with us. Actually, my ambassador will be arriving very soon and delivering his statement after the high-level part of the uh, Council. Uh, actually, uh, we would like to emphasize that we attach importance to the integration of migration into post-2015 development agenda. In this respect, we will assume, as uh, Ambassador Swing said, the chairmanship of the GFMD after Sweden. We hope that our work in this capacity will help us build further on the successful work carried out by the old chairs of the GFMD. I thank you. Thank you. Um, next speaker is the UNDP representative. You have the floor. inspiring uh, presentation, <coughs> and I cannot but not join in the end, uh, of the former speakers. Thank you, Mr. Director General, uh, distinguished delegates. First, I wish to congratulate the two keynote speakers on their important and inspiring presentation, and I cannot but not join in the aiming of former speakers. I also wish to thank IOM for its able leadership. Sorry. Okay, I'll try with this one, and I will not repeat myself, but th thank you for giving me the floor, uh, Mr. Director General. Uh, I wish to thank IOM for its able leadership of the Global Migration Group, of which UNDP is a committed member. UNDP welcomes the focus on concrete follow-up steps to the high-level dialogue, including the delivery of results against the Secretary General's eight-point action agenda, as well as the close collaboration with the Special Representative of the Secretary General, the Global Forum, and with civil society. 
We welcome the constructive tone and outcomes of the high-level dialogue discussions, particularly the support expressed by Member States for integrating migration into the post-2015 development agenda. UNDP is contributing to the informal working group that supports Mr. Sutherland and interested member states on this topic. Together with IOM, we have been early proponents of joint GMG involvement and positioning to promote migration in the post-2015 process. We see the post-2015 agenda as an opportunity to achieve two things. Firstly, a commitment to a global partnership approach to international migration that in the absence of global governance architecture would provide a guiding vision to the multiple fora and processes that exist in this field. Secondly, the post-2015 agenda is the chance to ensure that no person and no migrant is left behind. A global commitment to addressing inequalities through the systematic disaggregation of development data and outcomes for vulnerable groups should go hand in hand with national and international commitments to monitor and improve the human development outcomes and rights of migrants and refugees. Everyone should have the right to live in dignity. UNDP is working closely with IOM and other GMG partners in supporting national and local governments in their efforts to mainstream migration into development planning. Improving capacities for data collection and analysis for monitoring of migration and development trends and the assessment of programs and policies emerge as consistent challenges and priorities. Our joint IOM-UNDP program on mainstreaming migration into national development strategies is set to enter into a larger second phase next year with continued support from the Swiss government. It helps countries carry out situations, uh, situation assessments, identifies policy priorities, establishes, establishes inclusive coordination mechanisms and develops integrated migration and development strategies. As expressed in our corporate memorandum of understanding, we are working with IOM in a range of other areas. Indeed, around the world, UNDP's engagement on migration is always in cooperation with others. We will continue to bring our development expertise and networks to these partnerships, and we look forward to playing a continuously active role in a more outcome-oriented GMG in support of the GFMD process and to highlight migration in the post-2015 discussions. Thank you. Thank you very much. I believe we've exhausted the list of speakers now, unless I see other signs. Otherwise, if I may, uh, perhaps uh, I could call on SRSG Sutherland to any comments on these uh, presentations and maybe then ask the Deputy Secretary General to close the session. Uh, thank you, sir. I have very little more to say uh, because I think that there appears to be a widespread consensus from what we have heard about the importance of the agenda for the future. <clears throat> I would simply underline two points that have come through. First of all, the Global Forum remains a very important part of the process, as has been noted, that has brought about a growing consensus amongst the member states here. Secondly, the challenges are increasingly evident in the developed world in terms of a lack of understanding of the importance and positive value of migration, as opposed to the more obvious effects of a populist response which is negative to the whole principle of migration. The clear evidence, which is unambiguous and general, that migration actually helps economic development in the countries of destination is something that governments have to advocate. They have to come forward with their arguments domestically in order to contest the negative and sometimes racist perceptions that have been generated in regard to migration in some areas. And this is really what this whole process of dialogue 
evidenced today, evidenced in the high-level dialogue and evidenced in the GFMD is fundamentally about a recognition, using the word reflected in the comments of uh, the Deputy Secretary General in particular, recognizing the dignity of man and the equality of man in broad terms, the fundamental concepts which drove the creation of the United Nations in the first instance and which is fundamental to civilization. Thank you very much. Uh, if I may now turn to the Deputy Secretary General for, uh, to close out our session. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. <clears throat> it's been a pleasure to be with you uh, today. Uh, I have um, very much uh, treasured uh, the comments made by my uh, colleague and friend, uh, Peter Sutherland. I think his uh, important warnings about attitudes uh, is very important, uh, are very important in a day and age when we see so many signs of dividing humanity into us and them in different areas. I have dealt the last one and a half year with several of the world conflicts and uh, the elements of sectarian ethnic divides uh, are extremely strong. And uh, unfortunately, we see uh, reflections of this also in this debate in the, around the world. We have to shift the attitude to migrants from this uh, negative angle that very often is the case into a positive one because it has such deep implications. We have to uh, never, we must never depart from the basic premise that all our work ba is based on the equal value of all human beings. If we start to stray from that on one aspect, we are on a slippery slope. So therefore, I take very seriously that, that, uh, that warning. And I liked uh, the expression used by the representative of civil society when he talked about uh, <coughs> getting away from global indifference. Maybe we should move from global indifference to global engagement or even global solidarity. On the 2015, which is also within my responsibility under the Secretary General, uh, I, I think it's, the work ahead is going to be very much in the hands of member states. Uh, your colleagues in New York will be very busy and ministries will pass on uh, instructions to their colleagues negotiating in due time. I hope also that your governments will see the post-2015 development agenda in a wider perspective. You need to involve ministers of finance, energy, agriculture, environment. It's a concern for all parts of the government element, and, of course, ministers of migration. Um, I think the, the uh, agenda will be for, in two parts. One is that we, unfortunately, will have uh, uh, unfinished business of the present MDGs. Let us not forget that we, st we have almost two years left to finish the uh, present, uh, achie the achievement spelled out in the present goals. And we have made progress on some counts, like education. It's a very, very encouraging uh, development in that area. But then there, is, there are areas where we are making far less progress. I can just mention two areas. One is maternal health. Uh, and the second one is sanitation, it's a huge gap between realities and the goals. So we have unfinished business to do. The second area where migration comes in is to adapt to what I would call the new global landscape. We have a new global landscape in so many regards. We have uh, the enormity of, of migration as compared to past history. We have the uh, enormity of urbanization. 60% of humanity will live in cities in the next four or five years. Uh, we have, uh, unfortunately, also other phenomena, the, org the role of organized crime in today's world. Uh, we have uh, youth unemployment, which I hope is not systemic. I hope that Guy Ryder will 
perhaps give us some more hopeful signs on that, but it looks very bad, and it has enormous implications, doesn't it, on social and political cohesion in societies. Uh, we have a, a wonderful rise in the role of women uh, in the world, which unfortunately has not been the case in past history. So here we have a number of areas where we have to adapt in such a way that United Nations, in my case, and other international relations, IOM and others, will have to be uh, relevant in this new global landscape. And in many of these areas that I just mentioned, we do have, yes, organizations dealing with it, but we need, I think, more of cohesion, more of cooperation, more of dynamics between the different actors in this new global landscape. And I think a great challenge for the negotiators on the post-2015 development agenda will be to make sure that this new global landscape enters the the discussions, the discourse that is necessary if we are to have a realistic road ahead on the period from 2015 to 2030. And uh, I, for one, believe very much that migration is an indispensable part of that debate. But it is very much in the hands of member states. So it is for you to communicate to your governments, to your colleagues in New York, I guess, where the final negotiation will take place, probably in the spring of 2015. Preceded, of course, by the work done now by the special working group on sustainable development goals, which will finish their preparatory work in February and then go into a more active negotiation phase until next fall. But I think there will be another negotiation closer to 2015. And that's where I hope that we have all contributed to this wider debate where we reflect the new global landscape and show that we, as international organizations, can prove that we can play an effective role and that we by that can say to the world that international cooperation is important and relevant. If we don't pass this grade, if we don't do this, then we feed the tendencies that Peter Sutherland and others have mentioned here. Because there will be those who say, well, the international organizations cannot deliver. Let's look inward. Let's find our own solutions. And that would be very dangerous in today's world, where I think international cooperation is an absolute necessity. I would say, I would go as far as to say, in today's global world, global community, international cooperation, international solutions to these global issues, whether it is migration or climate change or whatever, the international solutions are, in fact, in the national interest. International solutions in today's world are basically in the national interest. We have a long way to go to reach full understanding of that, but the moment we do, you can imagine how much easier things will be in parliamentary debates with the reflections from editorial writers and public opinion. But I think it's basically true and relatively easy to prove. So here is the role of advocacy that was mentioned earlier by both Bill and Peter, I think, is to, to be taken very seriously. We have to prove the point that international solutions are necessary, but that they're also basically in the national interest. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I think that um, we are concluding not only on time, but with an abundance of inspiration and encouragement, taking heart from what's come out of the high-level dialogue and taking a vision forward given to us both by these wonderful interventions today by our two speakers here. Um, I would like to thank you both very much for the insights, your wise counsel, and, and pointing us in the right direction here because we're clearly at a, at, at, on the cusp of something new here uh, and getting ourselves lined up for this new global landscape. We, uh, since you uh, are joining us today and uh, we had our report on Tuesday, uh, we have outlined a, a five-year program under the title of uh, Continuity, Coherence and Change, and I think that's all been covered 
in your remarks. We continue to do those things which have worked well for us, and we try to increase the total amount of uh, the degree of cooperation uh, in the international community, and then look for ways to innovate to get ourselves much more in line with the, the new uh, global landscape. Uh, and I think the precautions that the SRSG has laid out today need to be of concern to all of us because there is, I'm sorry to say, not a lot of political courage out there on the issue of uh, migration. It doesn't easily bring in votes, and we're going to have to do a job of helping governments to find the courage to talk about the inevitability, the necessity, and the desirability of large-scale migration in our times. So I believe there are a lot of elements left today for food for thought for all of us here, both in terms of follow-up to the high-level dialogue. And we cannot leave the declaration standing. We, we now need to go to action. And we will also look to the working group on IOM-UN relationships and the 12-point strategy to give us further guidance for the way ahead and the changes we need to make. Because the ultimate success of the high-level dialogue is now going to depend on concrete action. And if we don't go to action, it will all probably have been somewhat in vain. So I think that at one point or the other, one of, uh, both of our speakers will have to leave us. I think the, the Deputy Secretary General has to leave uh, in, a little closer to noon, but feel free to depart when you have to. Uh, we'll, we'll regret to see you leave, but I know you have other obligations. And I think that uh, the SRSG can stay with us for the next session, and he has an obligation after that. So if I may then just uh, segue.